our cities have their subconscious mind too. Not in a sense of archetypes, dreams and symbols, but it's a substructure that is sometimes completely hidden, sometimes partly hidden, sometimes tucked away, but sometimes even below the street level as you're gonna see in this video. But it's nevertheless dynamic and determining and full of life. The conscious mind of the city, it's very obvious and it's in your face, right? Often at the street level. It's the restaurants, homes, shop fronts, shopping centers, libraries, town halls, schools and hospitals. It's the zoo, where animals are on display and there are signs that you can read. It's the botanical gardens, with neatly organized clusters of plants and trees. The desert landscapes to the left, the Japanese gardens to the right, the cafe in the middle. Right? Everything is obvious, in your face and easy to navigate. The Greenway, which is my favorite example of the city's subconscious mind and which actually starts here, is amazing. And you're going to hear from a bush care officer who knows a lot about it. Now, what makes it amazing? It's got hidden bush care sites full of natives, hidden frog ponds, underpasses, uh, stormwater canals, railway corridors, other tunnels, an Aboriginal mural, and even a, an urban waterhole. Hi, I am Jan from sustainablebutterflies.com.au and the content of this video is related uh, more to general sustainability but perhaps to the pillar number two which is greenery. Okay? Now if you like the video give it a thumbs up and subscribe because that makes the video more available and more suggested to other viewers. That will be awesome. Thanks very much. Okay, but let's get down to the business. Let's dive in, right? So we are right now at the start or the end of the Greenway, depending on where you start, obviously. The Greenway is an urban corridor about six kilometers long. So this end, we are at the Parramatta River end, right? Have a look. Okay, see, that's where it's end. It's a canal mouth, not exactly a river mouth, because this Hawthorne Canal, it's an artificial urban waterway. Now, Notice how wide this Hawthorne Canal is. It's at least 20 meters wide. And because this is an urban subconscious, it's going to be narrowing down and slithering underneath the uh, concreted carpet. So right now we are at our first bush care site called the Richard Murden, Murden Reserve, about one kilometer away from where we started. So here we have the original pre-European settlement native vegetation, right? For example, these ground covers. So we've got comelina here. Then we have shrubs such as kunzia or brainia and trees such as swamp mahogany and paper bark, melaleucas. Now, what's very interesting about this site, and this is the urban subconscious as well, uh, on few square meters, 50 square meters, we have this contrast between the native and original and messy, right? Like this, look how this site looks, right? I don't mean messy as in bad, I mean as in natural, right? And we in a very urban area. And at the same time, right next to it, right, right, we have this fence, right? And that's the Hawthorne Canal again. See, it's narrowed down a bit and tide is going low. So it's not as wide and not as deep. But see the stark difference, right? On few square meters, we're sharing this original, native, unstructured, full of life and full of natives and lizards and, and plants, etc. And then we have this grey, concreted, fenced off, straight, utilitarian, right, and man-made canal as well, right? But they're both full of life. Now look at this fantastic tunnel. This also is the Greenway, the urban subconscious. Now notice this map, the Greenway. The plan is to have the whole length of it, the whole six kilometers, from here where we started, we are here now, this is our next bush care site, all the way down to have it uninterrupted one green flow, kind of like it is right now, you see? It's a green corridor, there is the canal here, you can walk, you can ride a bike or a scooter or whatever, you don't have to cross the street or anything. But it's 
<laughs> like that right now around uh, for about one third of the length of the greenway and you will hear from Adam what's required to have all these currently green disjointed pockets like this but let's hear from Adam on that one right now we are at the Gadigal reserve um, which is sort of one third away from where we started on the way towards Cooks River but look at this landscape right we've got the insect hotel here we are underneath the pipe here we have the canal this is the Hawthorne canal that one that which was quite wide just a few minutes ago and then we here we have these bridges above rail rail trail trains right See? then these frog ponds notice this is the crate so that people don't drown but under this crate we have two continuous frog ponds connected right completely subterranean world so right now we are literally below the surface at the subconscious level of the city right the Hawthorne canal which was 20 meters wide and quite deep only about two kilometers away look at it right now this is quite dynamic environment and full of life rambling trains above right see now it's very colorful landscape too see the aboriginal mural right there on that wall see the vegetation around see the palm although that's introduced palm not native but it's quite interesting landscape the other thing i like about these places and that's the subconscious mind of the city is that you get to get a different perspective on the same area on the same footprint same square meters that you know quite well it's all surroundings are the same but yet it's different right because be, you are literally below the street level okay now this is also the point where behind that, that mural that aboriginal mural right that's where the continuous green flow of the greenway stops so from here from the start to here right gadigal reserve is uninterrupted past that wall is kind of like green pockets but you're gonna hear about that from adam okay so now i am lucky to be here with adam the bush care officer and would like to ask adam Adam, what is the purpose of the Greenway? What is the picture? Uh, can you tell us about it? Uh, thanks, Jan. Uh, the Cooks River to Iron Cove Greenway, the original community vision was for this, which at the time was a disused freight rail corridor behind me. And they would like, would have li they like to turn it into a, an active transport, um, light rail, and biodiversity corridor that runs all the way from the Iron Cove in Sydney Harbour down to the Cooks River. Um, a few years ago now they instated the light rail which runs all the way down to um, uh, Canterbury down there and now we're, we're throughout that time through the time before the light rail was installed and during and since we're working on the biodiversity component of that light, of that corridor. Um, that's been done through bush care sites. There's actually three bush care groups that operate along the corridor and they operate in around 15 different bush care sites. Um, so even whilst those, those uh, light rail was being installed, the community still um, got together and still continued to make progress in the Greenway. Um, we saw the bush care sites expand um, and we saw, we saw there become more and more bush care sites and the idea being working towards connecting all these, um, all these corridors, all these sites, I beg your pardon. Um, and as the third part of that is a, uh, is a, is a cycleway which will run along with the bush care sites and the light rail transport um, and that has, council started constructing that already. Uh, as yet, then the next it'll be a few years until they get to this stage where we're standing today. Now, my next question is that while the first part of the greenway is kind of like a 
connected continuous green corridor, that part bit from Iron Coat to Gadigal Reserve. Right now we uh, we at Johnson Park at Dalwich Hill and we have sort of like a green pockets that are not connected unlike the first part. Can you tell us a little bit about you know uh, the background why we don't why it's not all continuous greenway but why we have these green pockets well we are there some barriers or some roadblocks thanks yeah for sure Jan I mean the answer is pretty straightforward I mean this we're actually quite geographically restricted I mean behind me is the Dulwich Hill Goods Rail uh, corridor and so that was made as small as possible the land on the outer sides uh, past the uh, embankments of the rail was sold for private houses and that sort of stuff so we're actually we're actually only um, we're actually only dealing with the small parcel of land that was left for the freight rail corridor uh, we're lucky in some areas because we have areas where there's council reserves where we can use sections of the council reserve or where we've been able to lease land from the rail corp and Sydney trains so that we can have bush care sites here. Um, however, in certain sections in this area, as you said, Jan, there are actually just rail tunnels where the tunnel where the train just goes through the rail tunnel and there's no land on either side to provide that connectivity between the, the bush care areas and habitat. So as part of the Greenway, they're looking at um, tunnelling through the abutment so that they will make actually a cycle tunnel that goes straight through under the ground underneath certain roads, uh, Parramatta Road and and then straight through Longport Street and then a little bit further down here Canterbury Road. So that is one way that they're kind of tackling that as well. Um, another way is that we have um, we have what we call offset sites, which are because of the rail station construction. Uh, Transport for New South Wales awarded us certain areas along the corridor. Uh, and there's one here within the park of Johnson Park. One end of Johnson Park has been fenced off and that is now a bush care site um, to compensate for the land that was given up as part of the stations. Um, further on from that, um, we're trying to run a program where there's a bit of biodiversity in backyards where people can provide habitat in their gardens in a kind of trellis that leads into the greenway because uh, basically a lot of the land that's involved in the greenway is actually on private land so it's difficult for um, for the council to sort of influence what goes on there um, so we're trying to encourage um, we're trying to encourage um, residents to get along behind it as well and do things on their own private property um, on the far side of where I'm standing right now there's a unit block and that as part of the development of those units was uh, requested was required to put in um, some native plantings which ran parallel along the corridor and provided a bit of you know joining up two bush care sites or two stepping stones and that's the kind of approach that will help us kind of overcome some of those hurdles where possible. Okay so we are at the end or proposed end of the Greenway. Uh, you can see the Cooks River behind me, which is the destination of this five kilometer long green urban corridor. Obviously, there is no end of the greenway yet because we don't have this corridor continuous yet. You heard uh, from Adam what are the challenges and uh, tunneling through the roads, etc. It's a big project. And also we have a green go golf course here. So that's about it. Not exactly an oasis for biodiversity, but we'll see what happens. Thanks very much for watching. I'm really curious about, you know, seeing this coming to fruition and connecting, creating these biodiversity links and urban corridor for cycling, for walking, for animals, for lizards, for birds, for plants, for native plants, connecting it through this very heavily urbanized area. So, have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye.